While most of the world is asleep, living in ignorance, growing stronger in sin and rebellion, there is a small segment of the world population that is now awake and removing itself out of the way as Yah prepares to bring upon his wrath and his judgment. The world is giving their minds over to the world system and waiting for the world to move in its deception. They're waiting for the plots that they have been conditioned to accept. They are waiting for these plots to come to pass. While the remnant of believers in this world are rejecting anything that comes out of these liars' mouth, and they are preparing their hearts and minds for Yahuwah. You know, I have been coming with the same message about preparing for these end times, preparing for an economic collapse and war. I have been warning for many years about preparing ourselves and being ready. If you are one that watches these videos, it could be an easy assumption that, as I give these warnings, I am one that never has doubts or sometimes have anxiety, or I'm not one that sometimes my faith doesn't get put into question. I have no problem telling you that that is not true. The enemy many times tries to push certain thoughts in my mind, provoking me to worry and or fear. So it's not that I don't ever get these thoughts or that I'm just overly confident and I'm someone that is not like you and I don't understand what you might be going through. That is not true at all. The only difference, the main difference probably is how long I let those thoughts linger and how long I allow worry or fear to manifest. And I will tell you that the amount of time that is, it's not long. When those thoughts come, I engage in spiritual warfare and I rebuke them. I know where those thoughts come from, and they are not from Yah, and I have power over them. I recognize that this is all spiritual. I have someone close to me that lets fear and doubt and worry and many other thoughts consume him. Though he calls himself a believer, he believes that those thoughts are all about what he's thinking, and he refuses to understand the spiritual nature in this world. And he has refused to understand that he allows the enemy in and allows the enemy to guide him. And because he wants to ignore the presence of the enemy and what the enemy is doing, he allows the enemy to wreak havoc in his life and he refuses to fight the enemy because he doesn't want to believe that the enemy is there. You see, there's not much you can do for him until he decides to fight against the enemy too. You can only stand in the gap for so long for someone if they refuse to fight as well. But I use him as an example for the difference between me and others. And I do not say this to boast or to elevate myself in any way, but in order that maybe you, who might struggle in this world with your faith and things aren't going right for you, that you decide to fight back and engage against the enemy. It sometimes happens that when you listen to other people, you sometimes may reject many things they are saying because you feel that what they're saying doesn't apply to you because there's no way that they could understand what it is that you're going through. And you tell yourself, they don't understand the struggles that you went through. And this fight is just easy for them because they never had to go through what you had to go through. I want you to know that you're right. Everybody's life is unique and everybody's life has challenges, some different than others. I don't think comparing battle scars to see who is stronger than who is a way of measuring strength. When I watch movies or shows about war and someone gets injured, like they get shot or get cut with a sword, the movie can show some of the main characters swallowing up that pain like taking a hot sore to a wound to stop the bleeding, or getting a wound cleaned up without any anesthesia. When I watched those things, I always wondered to myself, if that was ever me, would I be able to deal with it? Now, I pray often that that is never me, but I do use those examples to draw strength from. I at least have an example of how people deal with pain, even if it's just a movie. I like to use examples of strength and people who have gotten through adversity, and I use it to build my strength. Now, for me personally, I never really had strong examples of what it looked like for people walking in their faith, walking in the conviction and trust in Yah. And I went to many different churches, went to many different places all across this country, looking for examples of men I could try to be like, because I never really had that personal example in my life. I mean, I grew up with a dad that loved me, but he did not love Yah, and he lacked power in this world. I knew from early on that he was not one that I would follow. Anyways, I searched for examples of strong men that stood on biblical principles, and I could not find one. There was always compromise. But I myself was raising sons, and I knew that they needed what I did not have. So what I could not find, I decided that I would be. And that road for me was not easy. This journey for me started a little more than 15 years ago, and as I look back then, 
I could see that Yah was grooming me for what he wanted me to do today. You don't know it at that time though, especially when you don't really know him yet and you don't have others to guide and counsel you. This ministry, it means a lot to me. I care deeply about Yahuwah and his kingdom. I am so thankful and love very much our Messiah, Yahusha, who was sent to pay the penalty of sin for all of us who believe. I sincerely want those who believe in him to be ready for him, and so I take this ministry very seriously. I read and engage in comments because I care. I know so many of you are going through so many different struggles. So many of you young men and young women lack proper male and female figures that would lead you to where you need to go. So many of you men struggle out here because while the world is actively against us being strong men, they still try to hold us to the standards of men. It literally makes no sense. And yeah, many of us, we want to be strong men. But when we are just who Yah made us to be, our women try to reduce us, the system says they're against us, and the world will not support us. How are we to be strong men when our women want to equal us in strength? I know it is very hard to be a man in this world without that right counterpart that is there for you in the way you need her to be there for you. Like the women today, they want to be equal with us instead of being our support and being a person we know we can depend on. We don't need their strength. We need their love. I understand many of you men, believe me, I do. I have four sons. And all I can pray and wait for is for Yah's kingdom. Because in a world where they have to deal with this feminism or the thought that being a man is toxic or they want them to wave a flag, I know that the world I'm preparing my sons for is not this one. I mean, with them looking for wives, many of the young women today want to challenge their strength instead of being a supporter of the strength that they have and helping them gain even more. It's a challenge I see daily and I don't do well with it myself personally. I don't tolerate feminism at all, and so a woman coming into my family will always run into opposition if she doesn't get those thoughts in line. Anyways, the point I am making is that I know what our men are dealing with, and I truly wish I was able to be more to more of you young men that need a male figure in your life. I truly do. And our ladies, I understand your challenges as well. How do you manage being a woman in this world and being submissive, looking for a man to lead you? And so many of these men do not want to lead. I mean, I understand the situation for many of you women. Though I was speaking to men just now, I do recognize what you're dealing with as well. Too much of our men do not want to lead. They're very immature. I know. Many of our men do not want to be men. That's not the audience I was just talking to. So because they don't want to be men, you feel that you have to be strong. You feel you have to be a woman that can take care of herself because who else is going to do it? I mean, I get it. I was reading a book from one of my sisters in the faith. She recently wrote a book that I cannot wait to be released, where she explained the perspective of black women that were raised by single mothers and some of the mindsets that you all deal with and have to overcome. It was the first time I ever was able to really understand this from a different perspective than my own. When her book is released, I believe everyone, man and woman, should read it because it provides great understanding. And so if they're watching... I want to give a special thank you and shout out to the Smith family. But the reason I bring that up is because I want you to know I understand what challenges most of you women. And though I probably cannot give proper guidance as with men, I wish that I could help provide proper example of a proper man so that you would know what you need to do to be a proper woman in this world. Because I promise you, if you're following the mainstream in regards to what the role of a woman is today, you are out of alignment and you are a major problem in this world. This is particularly in reference to black women. I don't like giving a lot of recommendations, but I do recommend if you're on Instagram to follow at his underscore daughter underscore seven. She's on Instagram and I think TikTok as well. She provides consistent guidance for those trying to break out of feminism. Now she's a part of IUIC and I personally am not a supporter of that group for multiple reasons. So if she promotes that, please know that I am not in line with that but she still is a good source I recommend for the content that she makes. But I'm getting off track here. I say all of that to say that I understand that there are challenges and I am not discounting anyone or anything. All of us have had to go through major things, some rougher than others. I'm just saying that in the grand scale of all of this, what we have gone through or what we are going through does not matter more than how we are dealing with it. 
I don't often like talking in great lengths about myself because none of this ministry is about me. I'm just a vessel Yah has given a voice to. But this week I am led to share certain things so that maybe it helps prepare and strengthen many of you who really feel no one understands you or what you're going through. You see, trials and tribulations will never be absent from lives of believers in Yah. What should be absent from us is succumbing to those trials and tribulations. We must be overcomers. And this is what every last one of us should be doing, overcoming and enduring. In dealing with these trials and these tribulations, there is a major attack that often comes to us first, and it is often the first one that can knock so many away from their faith. So I want to deal with it. I would like to share some of my testimony to you in hopes that it helps build you and strengthen your faith so that you are made more ready and able to overcome. Let's begin. Okay, so one thing that many of us need to get over is that what we know as Christianity, particularly in mainstream America, it's extremely fake. Don't get me wrong, I am not speaking about belief in Messiah. I'm speaking about the lack of action behind the faith and belief in Messiah. Today, mainstream Christianity is a faith that consists of a lot of hearers of the word, while at the same time, the same people are those that are not doers of the word. People claim faith in Jesus Christ all day long, but when their faith is required and they're required to be led by the Spirit, they fall and succumb to the spirit of fear or worry or doubt or anxiety. It is important that you recognize what our faith truly is and what it is not. And just because there are not many people around you that walk in the truth of what our faith is, it does not give you an excuse for you to falter and not be a true example. What I needed early on in my walk was someone to help me with proper expectations because I feel like if things were made clear or I was given proper expectations, when certain things happen, I would have been more ready and prepared for them. So I would like to be for you what it was I needed back in the day. Let me help make this clear just in case you don't already know this. When you choose Yahuwah, the Most High, and truly set your mind on serving Him, being redeemed through Yahusha, and aligning yourself to him, you are now waving your hand out, waving and declaring to the enemy that you are ready to move against him. You are declaring to him that you will no longer play on his team and you are against him. Do you recognize this? When you accept Yahusha as your master and your savior and coming to our father through him, you are now aligning yourself to a kingdom that the God of this world, Satan, is completely against and does not want you to be a part of. Make sure you know this. The scripture says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we also once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So get this straight. When you choose Yahusha, you are no longer walking according to the course of this world, no longer walking according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. You are now saying you are no longer on that team. So if that is what you are saying, what do you think the devil is going to do with that? Do you think he's going to say, okay, I lost them. It's okay. Leave him or her alone. They are with Yah now. If that is your expectation, that needs to change immediately. This kind of expectation should have been set at church every time someone came down for altar call to accept Yahusha. Every time people needed to know this. But because they didn't, as soon as the enemy came at them, they lost faith and they got deeper into sin. So yeah, if that is your expectation that that's what Satan is going to say, you need to change that immediately. What the devil is actually going to say is, I don't believe you. You're weak. You're a coward. You don't really want Yah. You love yourself too much. Blah, blah, blah. This is how he feels, and he's going to try to attack you. He's going to come to you with what weakens you and use those things that bring you into sin and back into rebellion against Yah. This is a very common story that most people deal with. They love Yah, and they chose him. That's why many of them went to the altar call but they don't know why they keep sinning. It's because that love of Yah was not stronger than the love that they have for themselves, and therefore they fall and do not overcome. 
I want to help prepare you for the real challenge we face as believers. You know, we can deal with a lot of different challenges, whether it's attacks on our finances or attacks on our health. Many different types of attacks, and they all could be severe and life-changing. But let me tell you and give more perspective that those type of problems can be felt with people that love Yah, yes, and have chosen him, but it also can also be felt among those that are against Yah and have rejected him. Those challenges are not just special to believers. That is not the strongest attack against us. And so I want to deal with one of the strongest attacks the devil will come against you with, at least based on what I have seen. Maybe it's different for many others, but for those who choose Yah, for me, I see the biggest problem or challenge we will deal with pertains with love. And if you do not recognize this and you don't put Yah first, make him the priority, the devil is going to defeat you fast when he uses this strategy to engage against you. I'm going to give you a little of my testimony. I grew up in a Christian family, but in my early years and young adult years from college and after, before I got married, I was very much a man that lived in sin. Women were my main goal and my main focus. And so all my goals in life were about how to get more of them. You see, when women is your main focus, you will find that sin will always abound. And this was my case. One thing about me, though, was that regardless of where I lived, whatever state I moved to, I always sought after a church home. I mean, I thought that was what being a Christian was. I went through many different churches depending on what state I lived, and I saw many different things in those churches. But I said to myself, who was I to judge when I was a sinner myself? And these men, who I thought were men of God, clearly had a stronger understanding of the Bible than me. So whatever my concerns were, were just because I lacked knowledge of the Bible. I didn't even go to church regularly, maybe one Sunday a month, maybe two if I felt I was really living foul. So again, I knew nothing about Yah, and I would have called myself a Christian. But if you challenged that, I wouldn't allow you to tell me otherwise, even though I knew I was a sinner. Now, after I got married and I now had children, I knew I had to do better. So we started to go to church more regularly. At least we tried to. I became a member at my wife's church that she and her mom went to long before we were together. Now, at that time, I was starting to learn things about the world and that people actually worship the devil. My eyes were being awakened to this world. The major shocker for me was learning about Jay-Z and Beyonce. I mean, for me personally, I'm a New Yorker, and Jay was a major influence for us. So when I started learning and seeing some of the things that were right in my face, but I couldn't see, I started to feel disgusted with myself. So I needed to learn more, and I wanted to get right. Shortly after I started learning about the world, one Sunday we went to church and the head pastor didn't preach, but another guy did. He wasn't very good, but whatever. He was an assistant pastor. And while he was preaching from that pulpit, he said, and this is why I love Jay-Z, because he tells us it's a hard knock life. He actually used Jay-Z in a sermon to explain his point about Yah's kingdom. I was so shocked that he brought up Jay-Z, who I just confirmed sold out. I said, maybe this guy just didn't know. And he unknowingly influenced the congregation to follow people who worship Satan. So I felt I should do something. So I went home, typed up a letter, and sent it to the church and explained what I found and asked if there was anyone I could talk to about it. I received no response after a week or two. So I sent the same letter a few more times in the mail and even called trying to speak with someone and I got no response. And so I told my wife, we are leaving this church. I told her, we can't go to a church where if we have a problem, there's no one to talk to. She understood and she agreed we should find a new church. This decision led us to an even worse church, but it felt good in the beginning. Their slogan was, no perfect people allowed. They gave us free donuts and coffee before we came to the service. They didn't care about what we were wearing and welcomed people of all races. They kept services short and to the point. I mean, we'd be in there for maybe 45 minutes, hour tops, I think. They even had a children's ministry where we could leave our children as we went for the service. It seemed great until one day the worship team did a secular song as the song that they sang right before the pastor came out to preach. Just how you look, you do no one else can. Combs, y'all know when the flow is loco. Young B in the ROC, uh -oh. oh Now, in black churches, they sing the best song right before the pastor comes out and the people start feeling it. I no longer personally say that the spirit was moving because I don't really feel that that's what's happening right now. Anyways, this church 
performed a Kanye West cover one day, then another day they did Rihanna, another day Beyonce. They had a whole four-part series about the band U2 saying God loves you too. Short series, my favorite band, YouTube, meets my favorite church, Church by the Glades. We're having a little fun with this. Our musicians doing some covers. And uh, and guess what? I'm enjoying it because I'm one of those people, I love YouTube, and it sold out so quickly, I didn't get tickets. They did a series with Harry Potter. So, you know, we're having a little fun with this book, but we're all about this book. Uh, if I can contrast the two briefly, this is a good book. This is a God book. This book is inspiring. It's creative. It's fun. But this book is divinely inspired. The author of this book, J.K. Rowling. The author of this book, The Holy Spirit of the Living God. They were doing so much. And I said to myself, someone has to say something because maybe these people don't really know what's going on. I actually made a video. It was my first one just showing examples of what they were playing in the church and what these artists were doing in their music videos. I didn't think they knew. Like, they performed Rihanna's Disturbia singing, It's Like the Darkness is the Light, right in the church, on their stage. I sincerely thought that they didn't know what it was they were doing. How could they, I thought. I went to the church to speak to someone. This man came and said he was a pastor. He told me he was once a police officer, but the church asked him to be a pastor, so he came on with the church. I explained to him what my problems were. I was so distraught. I remember feeling led to tears in the room. I thought, finally, there's a pastor I could talk to who will listen to me. After I explained everything, he nicely told me, why don't you just find another church? He ignored everything I said and what I poured out from my heart and basically told me this church was not for me. I later realized that this man, who was a former cop, was a form of security who they just conveniently gave the title of pastor. But his real role in that church is one who deals with the crazies, of which I obviously was now labeled. He was there to protect that church, not Yah. When I left that office, I knew something was wrong. You see, Satan is unwise. His pride and his ego and lack of care led me away from him. He didn't have what was needed in order to keep me in his web. His servants led me straight to Yah. After that meeting, I said, no more churches. I said, I need to read the Bible first and understand what this book says before I step foot into another church. And so this is how I started reading my Bible, and this is when my life changed. This is why the primary message of this ministry has always been to read your Bible. How can you know messages and doctrines are true or false if you don't read the word for yourself? I've been to dozens of churches searching after truth, putting my faith and trust in the hands of men. While I've always owned a Bible, I carried with me everywhere I lived, but I never picked it up and actually read it. I used to get to a few chapters in Genesis and then fall off and get distracted. That was my life before I made the decision to learn about Yah through his word and stop depending on man. And if you don't hear anything else I say, please understand that this must be true for you too. Don't just depend on me or anyone else to tell you what the scriptures say. Pick up the Bible and read it diligently like your life depends on it. Because it does. So anyways, I started to read the Bible on my own. It was during this time that my life was met with severe challenges. Before this situation, I had already lost my job a month or two earlier. That happened the week after I was baptized. I was baptized, and then the next week, I lost my job. I remember not being overly moved by it. I said, if this is what God wanted, then I will trust him. That job gave me massive anxiety anyway, and I had a hard time finding my niche for the clients. I also dealt with challenges within my family and my children. Your children could be a problem too if they were rebellious. My oldest one was exactly that, and my wife was battling through feminism. I praise Yah she no longer does. We were having a rough time though. So I started to read my Bible and understand Yah. That was my priority while also trying to figure out how to provide for my family, which I did again shortly after. So here's when it started. As I started growing in my understanding of what the Bible was saying, I started to see contradictions in what everyone I knew who was a Christian was doing. I saw massive hypocrisy and I needed to understand why. And this is how the main problem started. I went through all of that so you can have a better understanding. When I really started to choose Yah's way, I brought it up to my family who were supposed to be much stronger believers than I was. 
I actually hoped that they were going to help me make sense of all this hypocrisy that I was seeing and I wanted to understand how they dealt with it. I honestly thought that me bringing up these thoughts and trying to have these discussions would make them proud of me. They had such a problem with me when I lived in sin. I thought for certain that when I was talking about living more aligned to the Bible, these people would be happy for me and they would help me. I couldn't have been more wrong. They were not happy for me. They took everything I said as a challenge against them. Even though I was saying I was not against them, but against hypocrisy, and I just wanted to know their thoughts and how they dealt with it. Apparently, they never had these thoughts because they never saw the hypocrisy, because they never actually read their Bibles. They were actually just big, consistent churchgoers. My grandmother and my mother began to be my enemy. It wasn't immediate, but very gradual and intentional. When I would call them, the conversations kept getting shorter and more confrontational. I just wanted to talk to them about what was going on in my life. But as I started bringing things up, confrontation happened. Things kept going left. Because I was so young in my faith, I was often led to anger and frustration. But I kept coming back. Not for confrontation, but just regular checking in with my family. Again, I loved them. I wasn't angry with them. I was searching for truth. But as I was growing in Yah, my family started getting a few blessings that started to change our life. And I was telling my family that we were being blessed and I'm growing more in my faith. And that's when things started to change in my family. Because after they started seeing Yah moving in my life, then they began to attack. I wasn't prepared for it. I experienced slander and lies were told about me from my own mother. My dad, out the blue, called me and accused me. I can't believe you started stealing money from your grandmother. I did borrow money from my grandmother to start a business, but he accused me of stealing money. I mean, she sent me a check. I don't understand how I stole the money. I couldn't understand why he said that. I called my grandmother and told her what happened and asked her if she could tell him that I didn't steal the money from her because she knew I didn't steal it from her. And she said to me, she was just going to stay out of it. I said, why would you do that if you know my family is against me? And she said, she didn't want to get involved. It was my mother who told my father that lie, but she herself refused to talk to me. And my sister just jumped on it and she said she hated me. She actually told my wife she was embarrassed she shared the same blood as me. This was said to be all about money and it really made no sense to me. Also in the midst of these discussions, my faith was often brought up. Me thinking I'm better than them was said, that I'm judging everyone. Different things talking about me seeking Yah and what I was doing in Yah. My faith was a problem. I didn't recognize it at the time it was all going on. But now when I look back at many other instances, I see what was happening. And if I had to let those attacks defeat me and fall to how the enemy wanted me to feel, I would not know Yah the way I do today. You see, what was happening was that Satan was working through these people to reduce my faith. I was able to deal with many different situations, but I was never able to deal with betrayal and a lack of love from people that I expected it from. I never expected it. Today, now, I can look back and see that these people engaged in this wicked behavior many different times in different ways in my life as a way of control, withholding love from me so that I changed certain things in order for them to later accept me. This is the game they played with me. I don't believe they consciously knew that this was their strategy, but this was their method nonetheless. And because they were Christians, you would never expect that this was something that they would actually do. But here's the thing. It was because of their withdrawal of love that I truly learned the love of the Most High. I had to learn and to realize that I could not and I should not expect the love that I needed from my mother and my father. And the realization of that really hurt me severely. Like who wants to feel like their parents hate them? And so I can imagine all the people that have been abandoned or orphans or just rejected. It is very difficult. The devil used these people and then he tried to speak real chaos in my head so that I will fall into the traps these people were setting for me. The feeling of rejection and a withdrawal of love from family and people you care about is a very hard thing to get past on your own. My wife's mother loved her daughter, always. My cousin, his mother loved her son. Regardless of what he did, she was always there for them. I never felt that. And if you don't get those feelings in check, you can often go searching for someone to fill that void and it can be the wrong thing. But Yahuwah is wonderful and never leaves and forsakes those who love him. I can't explain how much he was able to keep me in peace and just show me how much he was there for me. 
I couldn't understand why these people who said they were Christians and they said that they love me would act this way with me. Never an apology on their end, even if I apologized. Never a thought of blame for their actions, even if I dealt with my actions. I could not understand it. And I knew that if I was really looking for peace and I just buried what was burning up inside of me and forgot all these lies I was witnessing and forgot about all the hypocrisies I felt needed to be dealt with, I know our relationship would have been easier to get through. But that's not me. And so I had to learn to depend on Yah for my love and support. And through this love that Yah had for me, he gave me the strength to deal with this world through strength. When I was feeling extra sad or defeated about situations, I was directed to the word when Yahusha said, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 through 39. Those who love their father or their mother more than him is not worthy of him. I felt those words. You see, I love my family. I love them. But how could I love them more than our creator? That makes no sense. I decided that he is who I'm going to place all my bets with. And if his word is saying all these things and these people are angry at me because I just want to talk about it, then that is on them. I never had anyone around me to help me understand what was going on. And that's why I'm making this video for the many of you that are now turning to Yah. This is definitely a way the enemy will attack you. Rejection and hurt from your family and friends is something you will face when you truly start following Messiah and you need to have your heart set properly. The same thing happened in different ways with my friends too. It wasn't just my family. Because of what I live my life for, which is Yah, I do not have a strong circle. I used to be a man with a strong circle with many friends. My wife too. And now we're both ostracized. It's really just us. If we were desperate for the love of man in this world, we would have fallen a long time ago. But we chose Yah over everyone else. And though we lack in social bonds of this wicked world, we are happy and we live blessed. I have a happy home, a blessed home. My family loves each other. We share love in our home. And we don't deal with the compromising attitude the people of this age accept. We have Yah's love. And if you don't know how strong it is, you can never understand why and how we depend on it. It's a perfect love that you can always trust and depend on. And so, yeah, even though we don't have much of the same social lives that most people that we know in this world have today, we have a happy, blessed home without conflict and without much strife. And from a person that came from a family that showed no love to being a home with nothing but love, I would never trade that for anything in this world. And when you see how wicked this world is, you can see it's an easy trade-off. So yeah, as you're trying to grow in your relationship with Yah and you want to prepare yourself for his kingdom, you're going to have to have the proper expectation of dealing with the withdrawal of love and hate from those that you expect to truly care for you. I really glossed over that situation with my family. It was actually much worse because as we kept growing, so did their hate. And it was not obvious or easy to see in the beginning. I began to actually doubt myself. I thought it really was just me. They would tell others lies about me. My mother actually told my aunt that I cussed her out and I don't even cuss. She literally lied about me just to discredit me. I'm talking about attacks that make no sense. This is from my mother. They hurt me when I think about it because it's very difficult to actually think of your mother and grandmother being against you and being your enemies. But I had to realize this and you need to know this as well. They were not my enemies. They are Yah's enemy. And vengeance is not mine, but Yahuwah's. But my main problem is that I do not want Yah's vengeance for them. So I have always tried to come back and reach them. This is how this ministry actually came to be. They would always say that their problem with me was anger and how I talked. So I stopped talking and started writing down my thoughts and wrote a book. I recognize I'm passionate and people can probably misunderstand my passion for anger. I get it. So I wrote a book. I sent it to my grandmother. She says she read it at the beginning and stopped reading it. That hurt me. I sent it to friends. They also didn't read it, but they don't read, so I get it. 
So I chopped up the book and made a website. And that's how Truth Unedited started. I was trying to reach my family and my friends. But I was trying to remove the barrier of what they were calling anger and my passion. I made these articles and then I sent the article to my mom, my dad, my sister, and her husband. My sister was the only one that responded. And this was her response. Please don't include me in these messages. I asked, so I'm clear, what messages are you referring to? She said, yours. I mean, she was just mean for no reason. I meant no harm by it. These people were just mean to me for no reason. But what the devil intended for evil, it worked out for Yah, because they were so wicked I had no choice but to depend on Yah and learn that agape love. And after I had it, that type of love was no longer desired. And Yah showed me that there were other people that needed to hear what I had to say. And that's how this ministry started. So if you just continue to follow Yah and do what he is putting on your heart, regardless if you're running against stumbling blocks and people that are coming against you, it doesn't mean that you're going the wrong way. You just need to endure and overcome because Yah has a purpose for you. You just need to be faithful to him. Now, with dealing with these people, the thing is, you can evaluate these people's lives and often see that Yah's presence, it's not there, even if that's not what they want to believe. They are often bitter, depressed, sad, full of hate, ungrateful. They gossip. They don't ever give in to what the Bible actually says more than giving in to their feelings or what the majority says. They have allowed themselves to be controlled by the enemy and therefore because they move through their flesh and have given their flesh the authority in their lives to dictate how they move, they will often move contrary to what the Bible says because they are being led by a different influence. Remember, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. If you're trying to walk more according to Yah's spirit and be a Holy Spirit led individual, the first thing you're going to have to deal with is understand that the majority of people around you do not desire the same thing and they will be used to get you off the track you're heading towards. It doesn't always show up in a form of hate, but it could be distractions. It could be them talking you down, telling you you're being extra. It could be pushing you to do other things and focus on other things that will move you off track. It may be them giving you an understanding ear to your sins. There's nothing worse than having people that justify your sins and don't convict you against them, but just make you feel like your rebellion is not that big of a deal and nobody's perfect, so don't try so hard. Telling you your desire for being more obedient to the word is works-based and you're evil and don't know anything about Yah because you're trying to be obedient to the word or that you're following a cult or you're judgmental. I mean, they will come at you in so many different ways. And this is normally the first way that Satan will keep us out of alignment with Yah. It's because we're so scared and don't want to deal with the backlash and rejection that people will have against us for standing out in our faith. And this could be from many different sides. Maybe it's not just family and friends, but also with spouses and significant others. Scripture tells us how to deal with this as well. Paul gives advice to this. But to the rest, I, not Yahuwah, say... If any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean. But now they are holy. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But Elohim has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. If they can live with you being sanctified through Yahusha, then let them stay and you continue to be an example for them. I know many of you are dealing with spouses that are not believers. The longer you are an example, the more Yah can reach them. But if they cannot deal with the spirit of Yah that he has placed upon you, and they leave, let them leave. But you must make sure that you are not influenced by them and their rebellion. However anyone treats you, you cannot allow this to be a reason for you to walk contrary to the faith that you say you have. As Peter says, Finally, all of you, be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil 
and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of Yahuwah are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of Yahuwah is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? That's 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-13. through This is who we are called to be and how we must live. I promise you that Satan desires to remove you from being like this. He wants to get you to live completely according to your flesh. And he will use your family and your friends to provoke you to move contrary to what you say you believe. Just so you can later on look like a hypocrite. I want you to think about it like this. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify Yahuwah Elohim in your hearts and be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct and Messiah may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of Elohim to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. That's 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. And these are some of the scriptures that counseled me as I went through these many attacks. And I promise you, I came out victorious from it. I feel deeply sorry about my family because I know if they don't change their ways, we know the outcome in the end. I do not walk in anger nor bitterness in regard to them. I want you to understand this point because it's important. Though these people have wronged me, I am not angry and I do not hate them. I understand what is controlling them. I pray for them and I desire that they cleanse their hearts. Even though they have wronged me, I still have tried to reach out to them to speak to them about these things, to clear the air. Much earlier on, I would not have been able to do that without being affected by them. But as you grow more in Yah, you recognize the battle that you face and you become stronger in dealing with it. So just because people wrong you does not give you the allowance to return evil for evil. You must always remain blameless. And this, I know, is easier said than done, believe me. But this is a part of walking strong in your faith. But if you do not recognize that this comes along with your faith, and this is a challenge you will immediately face, the devil is going to take full advantage of you if you have not firmly made it up in your mind to depend on Yah and make him the source of your joy and your happiness. When I had all those problems with my family, there were times they stole my joy. But as I grew in Yah, that power was taken from them. And it is important that you recognize if you hold hate in your heart towards them or you're just still angry and not willing to forgive them, it is not Yah that has comforted you more than you have moved in feelings of hate or lack of care through your flesh. And those are not righteous thoughts that are accepted by Yah. I spoke more on this than I expected to. There are other things I needed to say, but this is just the beginning of dealing with the challenges we face when we turn to Yah. If you're going to be ready for his kingdom, you have to understand that there are a great deal of hypocrites in this world. Many of them that believe that they have been ready for Yah for years. The older generation would tell you that they have been ready for Yah all their lives. But these people do not walk in alignment with Yah and he is not their priority. You have to know that in getting yourself ready, you're going to be coming up against them and they will be working against you in many different ways to make you on the same level as them. This is not just unbelievers I'm speaking about. Oftentimes, they will be more direct and they'll tell you they don't want to hear about your faith. I dealt with that and they were easier. A modern Christian won't say that directly though because they know how it sounds. So they will do other things that are meant to get you off track but it's the same motive. We are all people preparing ourselves for Yahuwah, and you must be willing to bear your cross. You cannot love anyone or anything more than you love Yah. You must actually make the decision to live for him and through him. Yahusha said, Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. That's Luke chapter 6, verse 22. He wouldn't have said this if this wasn't something we were going to have to deal with. He said, and you will be hated by all for my namesake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. And I'm just confirming to you the ultimate validity of that statement. What I want you to learn from this is, if you don't have examples in your life that you can follow after, if you know you're pursuing Yah, you need to be strong and you need to be that example. In order for you to stop sinning, your love for Yah has to be stronger than the love for yourself. You have to put him first. Read your Bible for yourself. 
How can you know messages and doctrines are true or false if you don't read the word for yourself? Don't put your faith and relationship with Yah in anyone else's hands. As you start growing closer to Yah, Satan will work through the people you love to try to reduce your faith. Don't expect that just because they are Christians and they go to church all the time, they will actually do what the Bible says and be led by the Spirit. Do not let the bad actors deter you from the faith. They do not represent the faith. They represent the hypocrisy of the faith. With the people against you, it doesn't always show up in a form of hate. It could be distractions. It could be talking you down off your faith, telling you you're being extra. It could be pushing you to do other things and focus on other things that will move you off track. It may be them giving you an understanding ear to your sins. If you're desperate for the love of man and from this world, you will fall. When you choose Yah over everyone and everything else, though you may lack in social bonds of this wicked world, you will be happy and you will be blessed. Satan wants to get you to live completely according to your flesh and he will use your family and your friends to provoke you to move contrary to what you say you believe in, just so you can later look like a hypocrite. Just because people wrong you does not give you the allowance to return evil for evil. You must always remain blameless. If you're going to be ready for his kingdom, you have to understand that there are a great deal of hypocrites in this world. You have to know that in getting yourself ready for Yah's kingdom, you're going to be coming up against these hypocrites, and they will be working against you in many different ways to make you come back to the same level they are on. We are all called to overcome and endure. At this time, I felt that I needed to be more open about my life so that it helps others they may be dealing with these same issues. We are in the last days, and it's important that we actually live up to the standards of the faith that we claim belief in, and no longer accept hypocrisy from ourselves, and from others. I call you to overcome and endure. Live your life with Yahuwah as your focus and your priority, and let his love for you cover you so that you can be ready for him when he calls. Be ready and be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share this video with others. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. Y'all willing, I do upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. If for any reason you no longer see my channel on YouTube, you can always find this content on my website and also on Rumble. To all of you, thank you for watching. I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you especially to those Yah has placed it on your hearts to give and you have done so. I thank you in your assistance in carrying out this ministry every week. I thank you for your blessings and your prayers. I pray this video truly helped those who needed it. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.